All right, welcome to Football Today, Week 3 Power Rankings. I'm your host, Bobby Skinner, here with my co-host, Justin Pennick. We're brought to you by Captain Morgan. Justin, we're here to rank the power uh, in the NFL. How are you? I'm good, man. I'm good. A uh, little change to our show. We kind of decided as a as a company that, hey, if you're if you're a podcast, unless you're kind of live reacting to something, you shouldn't go live. So no more live streams. I know that's a little unfortunate, especially for those of you that like to react live to the stuff that you think is dumb. Usually it's not, hey, we love you. We agree with you. Hey, usually it's you're dumb. Why are the Bengals so high? Oh, well, because uh, I'm dumb. not ready to announce the I'm not ready to announce the Bengals funeral yet, but we uh they're they're down there. They're they're down there. So Bobby Skinner, I'm good. Um, big shakeups this week. The NFL's in a weird spot. Um, I'm good. How are you? I'm I'm freaking wonderful. It's raining. The hurricane. The hurricane coming. Um, I'm I'm ready for it. Let's get into these power rankings, Justin. Uh, we're gonna go from 32 to one. And uh, we this is our our first segment of this. Always is not you know going through the list. It is what fan base will be the most mad at their power rankings, Justin. What fan base will be the most mad? Hmm. You know who I think it's going to be? Should be the Commanders. I was going to say the Commanders, right? I think the Commanders are going to be mad because uh, they're at 21. They are 2-1. and one. They have this young quarterback in Jaden Daniels that they're really excited about. They get to spit out stats like, you know, the Giants. Uh, you know, we haven't punted the ball since week one. Um, it's, it's, it's an exciting time for the Washington Commanders. But do you like buy into them and Jaden Daniels right now? I, I am a little bit uh, because in this weird NFL right now, where we're running the ball and we're not pushing the ball downfield, but that's what exactly what they did against the Cincinnati Bengals. So now they didn't do it a ton, and Jaden there was even some inaccurate Jaden Daniels push the ball throws down the field versus the Bengals. They just hit on two of them. R- right, right, and on prime time they hit on two of them on prime time. One being that money one at the end of the game, and but so that's more like than they're... a lot of teams can say right now. But that, but you know that Jaden Daniels has that in his bag, though. That's the thing. That's the stuff from LSU that you loved, and like the deep ball accuracy and the ability to do that. Now, the, outside of Terry McLaurin, I don't think. I mean, De- Deami Brown can do it. If there was one thing that Deami Brown was good at in college, it was. Is, is running a deep ball. I don't know if he's doing it in the pros, but if there's one thing in his bag that he had at college, it was that. So they, it's not like they don't have the personnel to do it. They don't have great personnel to do it, but Terry can do it. Deami Brown can maybe do it. Maybe that's a stretch. But I don't. In, in a league where there's not a lot of quarterbacks completing deep balls, there's a lot of quarterbacks that are struggling against the blitz, and Jaden Daniels has his legs if they're showing pressure, and then also Cliff Kingsbury and – you know, I, hey, I I, I kind of agree with Cam Taylor Britt about the whole college offense yeah, thing. Yeah, he was right. They just didn't defend it. Well, the college offense is giving Jaden Daniels answers, and they're sustaining drives, and th- that's that's kind of how the NFL is going this year, man. Explosive plays are down. Yeah, they're they're screening teams to death. You know, they're throwing a lot behind the line of scrimmage. You know, throwing to one side of the field. It it is a very collegey offense, right? No one like yeah, the Bengals ran cover zero. And and they threw the ball to Terry McLaurin deep, right? That is something that J- J- we've seen that exact play from Jaden Daniels to Malik Neighbors last year versus Mississippi State, like the exact same play um, versus a cover zero, just all out blitz. But defensively, they're not very good. No, that's where I don't. Their trust secondary, them. they're, they're is, still not good. Yeah, they're sec. If if we were just talking about their offense, I'd be a little more excited. But their sec, their defense is awful. Um, they're they're slow with their vets. Um, and you know, they're, I think they could, should be run on a lot more. Um, their, their secondary is awful. They're a bad defense. And I do like this offense is a bit gimmicky and they're be, going to be able to get by, but I, I'm not buying into them as a team that's going to win over, over, you know, more than half of their games. So that's why they are in the bottom half of the NFL to me. They're not an above average team to me. They're not a playoff team. They are two and one right now, but I, I know we over, we love to overreact to prime time, right? That's that's the, you know there's no greater tradition in the NFL than right. overreacting to prime time football. But you know we, we're going to talk about the Bengals suck. They just beat an zero and three team and then a one and two New York Giants, right? So if we're going to say that the Bengals suck, which I, they're not very good, that's for damn sure. And then they beat the Giants, who are you know a bottom eight team 
and the NFL, I'm just not that high on them. It really, it's their defense that I think is going to hold them back because they, the offense isn't, ju- isn't going to be perfect every game. And the offense isn't going to be, you know, the, a top quarter offense every single week in the national football league, kind of like how, how they have been maybe outside of week one, they're just not going to be that every single week. And that defense is going to hold them back. Defense is still bad. Yeah. It's still very so, bad. And how, you know, how, how long until I'm not saying their offense is going to be bad by the end of the year, but how long until teams are figuring them out a bit. Right. Um, so th- that's, that's what, what, what we, we have them at 21st. Yeah. Which is a huge jump. Yeah. It's a huge jump. And, and, and listen, while I understand that, there's the whole point of Washington is in Cliff Kingsbury. They're not running this advanced offense for Jaden Daniels, but you know what? He's he's operating it mis- well. He's using he's his legs it well. when there's a shot there to be taken, and they make and they draw it up easy for him. It's there, and they're throwing a lot of screens and stuff behind the line of scrimmage against teams that are playing this off cover. So they they are doing well, but I'm not I'm not sold on the Commanders. Like I'm not being right. like Jaden Daniels. He's him. He's gonna drag this team to success. We need to see more. I'm not overreacting to a primetime game. Right. All right, Justin, why don't we do uh, 32 to 25? Let's do 32 to 25. We have the Carolina Panthers still at 32. Tough for them. The, the Tennessee Titans at 31. The Las Vegas Raiders at 30. The Denver Broncos are at 29. The New England Patriots are at 28. The Jacksonville Jaguars at 27. The Colts at 26. And the Giants make it some moves up to 25. Still in that bottom eight, though. What, what, what piques your interest... <laughs> Here, because you have teams like the Panthers and Broncos at the bottom two coming off their first victory. Or, uh, yeah, we have the Broncos at 31, right? No, we have the Broncos at 29. Oh, the, who's at 31? Because I, I messed the Titans. Okay, Titans. I messed up, I messed up writing this. Um, I'm so out on the Titans. I don't have them that low. I think I have them at uh, 28. But I was excited for them going to this year. They're a team that has talent, and Will Levis just like flat out loses games for them. No, until like we're talking about until, a team that could be three and zero if if Will, Will Levis Le- doesn't just throw games away. Until Will Levis stops making decisions that loses his team football games, that this is where the Tennessee Titans are going to be. They hate him, they, and Callahan like loses his mind every single you know. Or at least after the Jets game, he lost his mind. But like he literally throws games away, you know. And Malik Willis comes back to town and beats you. Like I, I, I'm really, really down on them. Um, where are you at with the Raiders, man? Because this should this is a ship that can sink quick, right? If you ask me, hey, if you were going to put someone else, someone else next week will be at 32. I would say the Raiders. Um, I'm real. You know, I'm really just disappointed. Lost in the, they White. lost to the Panthers, obviously. Number one, that's our number 32 team. But I actually think the Panthers losing Thielen hurts quite a bit. Um, Pierce is saying guys are quitting on it. I think that was meant mostly at Jack Jones. The clip, uh, you know, went around of him quitting on a play. Yeah. They are, ta- you know, didn't rule out, you know, making a switch at quarterback. So you know that's going to come eventually. They're going to go to Aiden O'Connell. Um, they're not very talented overall. That's a, you know, they might, you know, Devonte. Everyone's going to be begging for Devonte Adams to be traded, whether they want to or not. This is a a ship that I could see sinking very quick. And once again, let's not hire coaches off of vibes. Right. But the the main thing with the Raiders is they had a game against the Ravens. They had a victory against the Ravens, which what, how did they win that game? They won that game by throwing the football and by being aggressive, using Devontae Adams and getting some big plays. Brock Bowers was part of that too. And then you come out and, you run the ball in early downs and you get behind early to a Carolina Panther team and you don't keep your foot on the gas and then you get behind and then you, that's how you lose football games. Well, they're the worst Zimmer rushing White. team in the NFL and they also have Gardner Minshew and Aiden O'Connell as their quarterbacks. That's just a yeah, bad spot. And, and that's and with the, uh, Antonio Pierce, who you knew heading into the year, you knew with the hiring of you know their offensive coordinator from Chicago, you knew that they were going to want to be a team that's going to run the ball. Like, hey, we're going to be physical and... That's how that's how we're gonna win football games. And yeah, that is back in the NFL this year, but they don't do it well. Um, and Zamir White has really disappointed me. I, I I thought that that was gonna be a guy that you know, maybe he wasn't gonna be the most efficient in the world, but he was gonna get a ton of volume. And man, he's bottom five efficient. And I didn't predict that. Um, you know, I I didn't predict that he was gonna be one of the best backs in the league, but 
I predicted that he would be better, and he's just not very good right now. So they have a they have a running back problem. They have a quarterback problem. I think they just have an offensive identity problem that they want to be a team that runs the ball. But you know, hey, you have Devontae Adams on your team, and you have a quarterback in Gardner Minshew that's been known to throw to wide receiver one. So maybe lean a little bit more into that. Why do you draft the tight end of the first round? Oh, let's let's use him a little bit more. They also have you know they have Michael Mayer too, who's just rotting in the abyss. So um, that's the Raiders, man. They're they're not good. They're not very good. The Colts pulled out a game versus the Bears, and then they so they aren't at zero and three, Justin. But I talked about this team in our we did a mailbag pod before the season. We asked, "What is a a dark horse number one pick in the NFL?" Right. So this doesn't mean you're predicting it, but dark horse. And mine was the Colts because I hate that defense, and like. I don't know why everyone was crowning Anthony Richardson. Like, he has yet to really show much of anything in the NFL. He's injured prone. Well, Anthony Richardson has been god-awful. That defense is really bad, despite the fact that the Bears can't get out of their own fucking way. Um, Where do you see this season going with the Colts? Because they're at 26, and if we would have ranked them at 26 before the season, people would have lost their mind. Anthony Richardson just needs to get better. He needs to get better. I mean, there's no other analysis, man. Needs to get better in the in the intermediate and the short parts of the field. He, he, again, the, this is part of my frustration with the. It's part of the re- reason why the Titans are down this low. Um, <laughs> you know, we haven't even talked about those Jaguars. Where I want to get, I want to get some of your thoughts on the Jaguars too. There are certain NFL teams that don't look prepared and ready to play football, and the Indianapolis Colts and Anthony Richardson. It, it's one of them. The running game is fine. That offensive line's fine. There are certain metrics that have. You know, the Indianapolis Colts offensive line, fine, and they're pass blocking, so it's not that. We know that they have one of the top five. It's Anthony Richardson not being able to throw the football right now. That's it. And then a bad, a very bad defense. I know they had a good game versus the Bears, which I I do want to talk about the Bears when we get to them uh, because they're they're the bottom of our next next eight. But the Colts wound up winning. I mean, the Colts won that game. They did. They did. Um, but the Jaguars did not. The Jaguars are only right now. Three. It's like what are what are the Colts good at? It's like running the ball. Yeah. And but they turn over the ball, right? So like yeah. you can't be the team that's really good at running the ball, but also turn it over like crazy. So like you, your strength is not that much of a strength. Or at least the Bears. I could talk about how good their defense is, and Caleb Williams starting to come along a little bit despite the turnovers. Where are you at with the Jaguars? I mean, they're zero three, so they're they're in a very bad spot. Everyone's going to point at Trevor Lawrence, right? And he played really bad versus the Bills, and he needs to get better. But rank their offensive players to me. How did he get to the season? I liked it, and I thought they would get back to more of what they they did in 2022. They don't even have – they don't have – they have barely have an above-average player on that. Like, like a level of very good, like Pro Bowl level. level, Right? People – Evan Ingram's been out, so you can't blame him. But he's been been over-inflated by, you know, short passes. Josh Allen is one of them. Who else? Like their linebacker, about, their linebackers are pretty good with you know, Folu and and Lloyd. Oh, I thought you were just talking about their skill position players. Well, just a, a, players on the roster. People like ETN, but again, that's 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 a running back. I I I liked Christian Kirk in 2022, and that's when he was the number one. And I thought they were going to get back to that. And I loved the. I thought Brian Thomas Jr. was going to perfectly complement Christian Kirk. He, May eventually, but he's very young. And, and Ryan Thomas Jr. is like, he's done what he's supposed to do. He's caught he's deep passes. He's done very well. Um, but like, rank their offensive players to me. I mean, there, nobody on their offensive line really stands out. Cam Robinson's a good player, but yeah. Good player. He's been around for a while. I don't know, man. Tre- is, is Trevor Lawrence number one? Yeah. Right? And and then number two is, is probably Cam Robinson. And then th- yeah. three being Christian Kirk, right? Like, or, or I guess you could throw Etn in there, but I'm not in love with Etn, and I don't, I don't know how much he's bringing to them. Now, Brian, the sheriff is, is a guy that's just been around for a long time. He's been really good for a long time. Yeah, but they're they're like who is who is helping? Mitch Morse. Like who is making plays for them? You know, oh, again, okay. Trevor Lawrence has been has been bad this year, undoubtedly. Not, I don't want to give him any pass for his play, but they're they're a mess. They have built a average a team that is like at at best is just average across the board when it comes to their roster. Josh Allen's a really good player. You know, they did the trade for Calvin Ridley and then let him walk. 
You know, like they've 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 badly managed that team. They've drafted guys just because they're long and strong, um, and they don't they don't have guys that are, are difference makers for them. Like they they do not have difference maker. There is no difference maker on that team outside of Josh Allen. No, even players like you kind of like like oh I like Tyson Campbell, but he he is he's not he's not amazing. So that's where I'm at with the Jacks is their mid has has come has has killed them. All right, let's do let's do uh, seventeen to twenty four. Let's do seventeen to twenty four. At twenty four, we have the Chicago Bears. At twenty three, the Miami Dolphins. At twenty two, the Cleveland Browns. Twenty one, the Washington Commanders. At twenty, the Arizona Cardinals. Nineteen, the Atlanta Falcons. Eighteen, there they are. The Cincinnati Bengals. Can't wait to hear your comments that they should be lower. Maybe they should. Seventeen, the Los Angeles Rams. What piques your interest here? I, 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 the Bears intrigue me because that defense I actually think is really good, like like pretty damn good. Caleb Williams is you know threw for three hundred sixty yards. He did some really big boy stuff, right? Like they're not they're not putting any training wheels on Caleb Williams. There's none there. Now he the turn like the turnovers killed them, right? So you know Caleb Williams can't be crowned, but if you're watching Caleb Williams, you kind of see like it's. It's there. It's it's going to show up eventually. And he's going to put together some complete games. Their run game is so pitiful and disgusting. It's terrible. It's disgusting. It's terrible. DeAndre Swift sucks. I can't... That's where I get... I, I was so in love with this Bears offseason with a big B-U-T. It's like, why did they spend money on getting DeAndre Swift as their starting running back? Do you put it more on Shane Waldron or DeAndre Swift? I mean, It's I, both I, of them. It's both on them. Yeah. But, but DeAndre Swift... I put it on the front, you know, for their management for, you know, bringing in Shane Waldron and then bringing DeAndre Swift as their running back. Why? You know, I'm not like the big pay running back guy, but I was like, if there's one team that should have spent the extra money with the cap space they have on Saquon Barkley, it should have been the Chicago Bears, right? Because like they had like their running back duo of Khalil Herbert and Roshan Johnson is not an awful one, right? Like they've had rushing success with those two as their guy. And then DeAndre Swift stinks. Like, I've never seen a, a running back in the last few years get him enough opportunities with just that poor, piss poor vision, right? He's a negative as a blocker. What does he do well? He's just athletic. So, if you put him on the Detroit Lions or the Philadelphia Eagles, he's going to have some big plays. He's going to have some nice stats behind the best offensive lines in football. Behind a Bears offensive line that's not, he's going to create negatives. And then you have an offensive coordinator who's running speed option. Down on on fourth down, like they they are a mess of an offensive team. They are a mess. There's nothing easy on there for Caleb Williams, and their run game no. is pitiful. It gives it is a huge disadvantage to have that bad of a run game. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm looking at the quarterbacks that actually have the highest air yards per pass attempt in the league right now, and it's Anthony Richardson number one, Trevor Lawrence number two. Brock Purdy and Derek Carr and Kyler Murray, three, four, five. Dak Prescott, six. So, I mean, that's a good run of quarterbacks that are having good seasons. But then Caleb Williams, Will Levis, seven, eight. I mean, they're, I, I look at Caleb Williams, and I can't believe I'm going to say this. I, I, I want his air yards to come down a little bit. There's just there's things that need to be easier. He's not progressing at the level that I think. I, And that's not a bad thing. It's not well, a bad and thing. You watch they, the they film, you see boy. some good shit. But there's just no easy yeah. buttons in that offense. Correct. And, and you have... You have weapons on that offense that should be able to make things easy on you. I mean, D- DJ Moore should be getting more targets. Yep. Than he, I mean, and he's getting he's getting a decent amount the last the last two weeks, I think. And he you know, had had a decent game against the Colts, but still he threw fifty. I think Caleb Williams threw the ball fifty two times, and DJ Moore I think had less than ten targets. I mean that 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 should go up. DJ Moore is your wide receiver number one. He's one of the biggest best weapons in the NFL for a reason. He can get open in the short and intermediate parts of the field. You got to utilize him more. So yeah, ten tar- he's had, they, I mean, he's had ten, ten, and eight targets, so that's been pretty good. But yeah, he's. But you still feel like there's more. I mean, in, in in the effort to make things easier on Caleb Williams, I feel like that is an answer. Yeah. Um, and you know, having Keenan Allen back, getting Keenan Allen back would help too. Um, Odunze, it was nice to see him have that you know big explosion of a game, but they got to get you know more on the same page there. They're just. I think offensively they're kind of screwed because the offensive line is not that good. There's nothing 
easy in that offense and their run game's awful. Yeah. Like it's 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 like kid- if Chicago is like, hey, can we want to do let's just create USC again. Let's <laughs> let's create 2023 USC as an offense with better Dude, receivers. I'll around. give them I'll give the Bears that. They have much better receivers than 2023 USC. Any, anything else from this tier that sticks out to you? I mean, are we going to – the Bengals. We did it. Yeah, we they said we were going to do it. They don't have any pass rush. Outside of Trey Hendrickson, though. No. Yeah, it's just Trey Hendrickson. And if you only have one guy yeah, as a pass rusher, it's very easy to avoid. I still believe in their offense. Yeah, I mean, their offense did have a good saying? game versus the – you know. You know, their their offense played a good game versus the Commanders. You know, they were right there with the Chiefs. The the Patriots game was obviously really bad week one. So I, I believe in their offense too. And I believe Lou Anarumo can be a good big game defensive coordinator, but they're 0-3. And and they ha- and they're and they're a flawed team. Obviously, when you're 0 3, you're a flawed team. So I mean they're just they're there's a I don't know what the numbers say, but they probably say there's a ninety eight percent chance of them missing the playoffs. So you go to the bottom half now. They have the they have the Panthers this week. This is hey, this is a who, who do we steal this from? Bill Simmons. Uh, Bengals at Panthers. What's the line? Yeah, I guess the line. I'm going to go Bengals. Bengals at Panthers. And, that, and that's what changes it. With the this is a Panthers home. I'm going to go Bengals plus three and a half. Bengals plus three and a half that they're underdogs. Oh, sorry, minus three and a half. It's minus four and a half. Okay, not not too far off. So that was a good guess, but still like Andy Dalton revenge game. Andy Dalton revenge game. So that Bengals Panthers one o'clock on Sunday. Dude, they better. Well, let's you, let's you go through win. this though because the tier they're in and it's like who who would you say by the end of the year they're a better team than? Right, not not judging by records. I know the Commanders. That's they'll get pissed off. We already covered that. the The Falcons. I mean, they're they're one and two. You know, they're yeah. a, a Saquon Barkley drop away from me in zero and three. Um, they are another team that doesn't have pass rush. Even though I really, there's some things about the Falcons defense. I, I love their safety duo. I love their run defense. But until Kirk can really move, you want to see it. The Cardinals. I think you can make a good argument. Like, let me actually see where I had these ranks. So I'm not I'm not going off of your rankings. Um, uh, nope. I had the Cardinals at 20. I had the Bengals at 18, which is where they both ended up. How about that? Um, commanders. Yeah. Browns. I would take the Bengals over them right now. The dolphins. Yeah. The bears. Yeah. So like really the only ones you could really argue is the Falcons Cardinals. I mean, the three teams right after them. Right. Right. And I'm, and I'm taking, I'm taking those. I'm taking the Bengals over those three teams. Oh, we're, de- oh, we're definitely here. And, and again, I, I don't, the, the whole premise of power rankings is that this isn't standings. It's who do we think is a better team. I understand the commanders just beat the Bengals. I still think no the Bengals. No way. A team, a team, you know. Anyways. So the Ravens need to be lower than the Panthers, right? Both one and right. two. Or sorry, the Raiders. Right. Both one and two. Ra- you know. Right. Anyways, if you do the this team beat them, how are they lower game? You'll, you'll just be in a never-ending like, well, this team's better than this team. My uncle Danny well, does that shit are. and it drives me nuts. Um, All right, you want to talk about something really quick? Why don't you, and then, uh, why don't and you talk we'll... to us about something, Justin? I will. There's a chill in the air. The leaves are falling to the ground, and there's football on every single weekend. And that's what fall is all about. And the DraftKings Sportsbook is bringing you this power ranking show every single week. You can make each weekend even more exciting by getting into the action with our partners at DraftKings, the number one place to bet on touchdowns right now. All new customers who bet $5 once, so they get $200 in bonus bets. When you use code JAMFOOTBALL, that's $200, that's $200 instantly in bonus bets. Stay in on the action. Use your $200 in bonus bets to bet anytime touchdowns on DraftKings. DraftKings is the place to bet on touchdowns. So draft, so download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now. New customers use promo code JAMFOOTBALL. Bet $5 on any wager. You get $200 in bonus bets instantly. It's promo code JAMFOOTBALL only at the DraftKings Sportsbook. Bobby Skinner, you'll be glad you did. You'll be glad you did. Now we're going to move from 16 to 9. That's how we do it. So coming in 16th, Bobby Skinner, get ready to tell me where you had this team. We have the Chargers at 16th. Bobby had them higher. I had them at 12. 
Uh, the bang, uh, the Buccaneers are at 15. The Cowboys fall down to 14. The Ravens at 13. See, how about we, we gave you that nugget. The Ravens just beat the Cowboys. The Ravens at 13. The Seahawks at 12. The Steelers at 11. The Saints at 10. And the New York Jetropolitans are at 9. This is where it's like the rankings get weird because we can have like some big discrepancies and then other teams will... Like yep. last week, the Cowboys rose in our power rankings just because we had discrepancies on other teams, but we kind of had the Cowboys solidly at like 11 or something, but they rose because of that. Um, let's see. What are you... The Saints. Do you... Yeah. Does, does that Eagles game turn you off a lot on them? Because I had them... They're at 10th for us. And I had them at ninth overall. They don't turn. It doesn't turn me off a lot. It just Dennis Allen disappointed me on that third down call. It's one dumb third down call away from them being three and zero. The the fourth and inches and not being able to get thirty six inches kind of disappoints me there for a team that's kicked ass so much in the run game. But you know, we've been waiting for that offensive line to kind of rear its ugly head, and it did a little bit. Against uh against the Eagles, the Eagles did a good job of pressuring Derek Carr. We know Derek Carr isn't good with pressure, so that that's the thing though, is that you're not going to have every game where you're going to have all these 40, 50 yard plays in the first half of games, and then Derek Carr is never going to throw the ball because you're up by three scores in the first half. That's just not going to happen every game, and there are going to be games where Derek Carr towards the second half is going to need to make throws and he's going to need to be under pressure and he's going to need to stay in the pocket, not just go outside the pocket and all this stuff where it, it was a perfect game plan. It was a perfect game script for the New Orleans Saints, the first two games of the season. And it was not perfect week three and you were home against a quality team and you couldn't close out the game. So it's not a, it's not a big worry because again, we still need to see what what are the New Orleans Saints. I don't think we know that. I don't think we know that answer. We know yet. their defense is still really good. That's the one thing we, we do know. know their about. defense is good, but and that but it's still disappointing that in in, in crunch time when it kind of mattered most. He had Derek Carr that kind of threw that interception. Still wasn't good against pressure against the against the Saints and Dennis Allen with that really disappointing man coverage call on on a third and sixteen that allows Dallas Goddard to go sixty yards. Yeah, they're you know again a couple of plays now. Here's what I will say. Fangio did a good job figuring out the Saints a bit, right? And someone tweeted it and reminded me of like the the Rams Bears game in 2018, where the Rams were rolling. You know, is the NFL broken because teams are scoring so many points? You know, we have that Chiefs, you know, Rams Monday Night Football, and then all of a sudden the Rams roll into Chicago on a cold November night and get the shit kicked out of them by a Vic Fangio defense, right? So Fangio is great at you know finding out what you do best and taking it away. Uh, so Fangio did. So I don't. I don't think other defensive coordinators are going to have great success. And you know they play the Falcons this week. I'm taking the Saints ten times out of ten in this matchup. Um, even though I, I think the Falcons can do some good things against that offense as well. Um, so I'm still high on the Saints, but a three and and0 win over the Eagles would have would have done something for me. And they 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 did not step up to the challenge. And and the Eagles were missing AJ Brown, right? Like I think AJ Brown yeah. is so important to that offense. And they and they you know they've missed them for two games and yet they're at two and one, right? So despite all the Eagles' flaws with turning over the ball defensively, you know, Jalen Carter, Jalen Carter finally had his first like complete game from start to finish this week. Uh, so we'll we'll talk about the Eagles in a second. But I am still I'm still high on the Saints, but not as high. Okay, because because they lost. Uh, yeah. Steelers, you want to talk about them? They're at 11 for us. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I have I'm them at 11 as well. a little bit. What did you have them at? What did I have the Pittsburgh Steelers at? I had the Steelers at 12. Okay. So it averages out pretty well. Yep. I, I'm starting to believe a little bit. If it, the, they they need their rushing offense to get better though. They, that's well, that's here's the thing. The, their defense is really good. Like I love yes. their defense. I love I love everything about it. Their defense is really good. They're going to win games this year. They have a bad offense. Stop trying to convince yourself that this Steelers offense is good. And like if your if your defense was bad, like this is if the Steelers defense was bad, would we say, be saying anything positive about the Steelers offense? 
if repeat that question if the Steelers defense was bad would we be saying anything positive about the Steelers offense oh no because then they would be a bad football team but this has been the Pittsburgh Steelers story over yeah the last I know so I, I, the I will say though hey 11th hey here's this defense matters but you know they don't have an offense that can compete at the end you know for a Super Bowl at the end of the day here's this it's early it's early in the year where is Justin Fields and EPA and CPOE composite? Oh my god, I I hate EPA CPOE for quarterback, especially early year because he doesn't turn over the ball. And right, you know they get. Some but it's de- part of the story, though, man. It, it's it's what defines Anthony Richardson and Will yeah, Levis as quarterbacks great for right now. What their defense is, I agree. I'm not complaining. Oh, why are they running their offense like this? Continue to run your offense like this and and get the CPOE shit. I hate CPOE. I hate I hate that what, fucking a, a quarterback with accuracy. The quarterback that's throwing the ball with it's, accuracy. It's, no, it's 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 a bad stat. It just you can't measure film by dots. EPA I like. EPA measures results. CPOE I fucking hate. Um. So if you want to tell me the EPA, I'll I'll listen to it. Uh. All right. Well, he's fourteenth. The Steelers' offense is playing the way they should. I'm happy with Arthur Smith. I think Arthur Smith is doing a good job. But that offense is not good because of the talent that they have, because of the quarterback that they have. So they're doing a great job for their their situation, right? I wouldn't want the Steelers' offense to do anything else than what they're doing right now, but they're not a good offense. They're 17th in EPA per play. Yeah, and they're 24th in scoring. They're doing what they have to do. I agree. I agree. I am happy with what the Steelers' offense is doing when I when I look at the roster. But they're not a good offense. Who do they have this week? Let's see. I think it's someone they they're going to beat. I it's the Colts. Oh, yeah. They're going to beat the Colts. They better beat the Colts for the show. They're shoot. only one and a half point favorite favorites on the road. There's just Anthony Richardson would have to have like an aberration game compared to the first eight weeks. Because That's the crazy. Steelers will stamp out that fucking offense and their defense is. It might be the worst defense they the Steelers have faced all year. Like they, the Falcons' defense is pretty good, despite the lack of pass rush. Who they beat in week two? The Steelers. Yeah. Week two they beat. Then they beat the Chargers. No, week three oh, they no, beat. That, the that just happened. I don't know who they beat week two. Hold on. Can't remember. Pull it up. Um. So this may be the worst defense they faced all year because in week two they beat. Oh, without a doubt. They they beat the Broncos. And I actually think the Broncos defense is is better, you know. Yeah, they have a, they have a decent pass rush. Yeah. Uh, so this this is the worst defense they faced, and an offense that cannot stop throwing the ball to the other team or missing guys by twenty yards. So they're gonna they're gonna be four and zero. So good for the Steelers. I'm not I'm not like I, hey, a team is playing to their strengths, and I like it, but their offense isn't good. All right, anything else from this tier? Anything else from this tier? Ravens, where are you at with them? Are you still worried about them? Yeah. I mean, I, we have them at 13th. I have them personally at 15th. So that means you have them at... I have them at 13th. 13th, okay. Um, They're doing a good job coaching up around their offensive line. I'll say that. And the defense had a much better performance this week. Yeah, where are they in... EPA per play. They're sixth. Lamar's just that good. Yeah, they have they Lamar's have they have that, that type of quarterback. Like honestly, I would only expect them to rise as the year goes on. Because they and, and they're a good coaching staff with John Harbaugh. Um defensively we'll see how good their their staff is as the year plays out. You know, they lost their, their defensive coordinator and their best best two defensive assistants. But they're just I don't I don't view them as a real deal Super Bowl contender. Like I I have the Steelers rated higher. Like you know, speaking of the Steelers, I think the Steelers are a better team. If they played this week, I would pick the Steelers to beat them. Yeah, I I would too. I would too. Um, I mean, the the yeah, the Ravens are twenty fifth in defensive EPA per play, and the, and the and the Steelers are first. Right. All right. Anything else from this tier? Nothing else from this tier. Let's move on to the final one. It's what everybody watches for. Let's pay the bills. Oh, speaking of the Bills, I feel like the Bills I, I, I get way. This is my, the le- most the least interesting tier for me is one through eight every week. I, I, it's like, yeah, these teams we, are we, good. We like to shit on teams sometimes. But, uh, good football is good football, and these are some good football teams right now. The Vikings are at eight. The Eagles are at seven. The Packers are at six with no Jordan Love. 
the 49ers are at five dropped. Houston Texans dropped down to four. Detroit Lions are at three. Kansas City Chiefs dropped to two. And we have a new number one paying the bills. The Buffalo Bills are at number one. Josh Allen's just kicking ass. The Buffalo Bills are kicking ass. They're running the damn ball. They're playing good defense. Yeah, style the Buffalo points Bills matter. The- and they've, had, they've, they've looked better than the Chiefs. They're both 3-0. They're the best team in the NFL. Yeah. Um, Josh Allen, so, you know, I predicted he's going to win MVP. He's playing like it. He's not turning over the ball at all. Uh, running away with that right defensively, now. Defensively, they're playing really solid. Um, you know, I still, if they play the Chiefs in the playoffs, man, I might just go the Chiefs because they've been able to do that consistently. And I actually think they have better defensive talent than the Buffalo Bills at the top. I think overall it's pretty even. Um, but the Bill, the Bills are the number one team in the NFL right now. Undefeated, yes, playing great ball on both sides. Um, I'm I'm in on the Bills, and I'm excited for them. So, you know, we're 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 fantasy football guys. We're fantasy football guys. I'm not really. I needed um, I needed like 40 points out of Mike Gusecki, Josh Allen, and Evan McPherson Monday night to clinch and win my matchup this past week. I barely needed to even wait for the for the Bengals game to start because Josh Allen did it all by halftime. I was like, oh, I just won. Great. I thought I was gonna have to sweat out the evening. Yeah, it's a nice nope. little reminder. That even though they're running the ball and they're going to continue to run the ball and they're going to do it well, right? And they, and they did that versus the Jags. That Josh Allen could still put it on your fucking head. He can he can still go out there and put it on your head if if you want if you want to get into like. And this is why I think one because of the way defenses they're playing, they don't want to turn over the ball and stuff. Like so they they want to be able to do that so they can win long term, and that's the way they should play, Justin. But. Also, because they want teams to play them that way, they want teams to start playing them in a way. It's like, okay, let's we got to stop the run, or they're going to be efficient, right? You know, they're they're good at handing the ball off. Josh Allen's, you know, probably the you know a, a top three running QB in the NFL. Mm-hmm. So play us that way, please play us that way. So then you can really see what excites us all about Josh Allen, and that's making plays on with his legs, throwing the ball down the field. Um, you know, Khalil Shakir obviously has been, you know, super efficient for them. Uh, they're, they're a team. They're, they're really, really fucking good. They're the number one team in the NFL. Bills Ravens this Sunday. Oh, 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 what's the line? Bills at Ravens. I think I might have seen this one because I sent you guys over the talking giants rundown. I think the Ravens are favored by two and a half, right? Yes, they are. So I saw this one. I saw this one. That's crazy. And this is a Sunday night game. Oh, that's yes. Yes. I, I can't believe oh, the Ravens so are fun. favored in that. Even if they were even if the Bills were only favored by half a point, I'm surprised the Ravens are favored in that. And this, yeah, and I a high over a pretty high over under two at 46 and a half. Like that this would the Ravens would have to win in a shootout. I, I just don't I don't buy into that defense holding the Bills to under 20 points. With the way that they're playing offense right now. Yeah. Yeah, I don't either. Mm. But hey, the French. Ravens did play the Chiefs tight, you know, and they're our number two team. They did. So But also the, the Ravens the, beat the Cow they beat they even though the Cowboys came back, they beat the shit out of the Cowboys and then they you're allowed to have a, a random bad game versus the Raiders. There's we're waiting I I'm still waiting for this, but Patrick Mahomes does not throw the ball deep anymore because he just can't. No, teams don't let them in. He just doesn't have the dudes, right? Xavier Worthy's fast and can get down the field, but he's not so. I think Rasheed Rice can too. You know, I mean, he's based. He's the king of the inbreakers. He's kind of taking yeah. a little bit of the, the. The thing is with Kelsey is I do worry a little bit. Is like Kelsey's got to get back in the shape, and I think he will, but he doesn't look very good right now either. No, you know, and there those lights, like- those lights. Turn those lights off. There was a graphic that was floating around about like d- deep, deep attempts and how Derek Carr like has way more deep attempts than Patrick Mahomes and just Patrick Mahomes. No, Patrick Mahomes is thirty second out of thirty three QBs in the NFL in deep attempts. Dude, it's crazy. Who do you think's lower? Is people? It's crazy in deep rate. Right? Yeah. My initial guess is Bryce Young. Nope, Baker Mayfield. Oh, kind of surprising. I know. I know. 
It's actually he must have a lot of throws at like fifteen to twenty yards because they they do throw a good amount of hole shots in Tampa. Chiefs offense is 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 in a weird, interesting spot where it's good, but it's not great. But it has Patrick Mahomes, so it is great. But this is the way it was I'm, last I'm year, and they fi- they figure it out, and they have a very good defense um, led with the Chris, run game Chris good. Jones, who's amazing, and then a really good defensive coordinator, Spags, and then good town hall. So the Chiefs are fine. Yeah. Um, but hey, it, it's. They just won back to back Super Bowls, man. It's when's the last team to three peat? Never, right? Yeah, I don't think any team For has the... ever three peated in the NFL. I think we talked about that no. before the season. Yeah. Maybe the Pat the Pats didn't do it in the early two thousands. Because they just they just doubled the up. The Packers won it the title and then the first two Super Bowls, so that doesn't count. Right. So that, that's that doesn't really count. That doesn't count, Ms. Lombardi. Suck it. Um Anything else? Okay, how about Texans no. still high after their loss, and they're higher than the undefeated team that they lost to in the Minnesota Vikings. Are you where are you at with the Vikings? Let's talk about the Minnesota Vikings. I want to talk about them quickly. I think that, yeah, I'm, I'm in. I'm in on them too, right? I'm not now. I'm not one of these people going. See, Sam Darnold, all he needed was a little bit of time. Like, no, we've how many? Like, we talk about how this Vikings offense is such a great situation for a quarterback. Right, Sam Darnold's a quarterback with some talent. He can run that offense well. But this idea that, like, ah, see, just give quarterbacks seven years and they'll figure it out. Like, no, this is a quarterback taking advantage of the Vikings offense. He has an arm to make some big plays that other quarterbacks can't. He's much better option than the Nick Mullins in the world, so we've seen throw for a lot of yards in the Vikings offense. But, like, let me let me go through the QB rankings, uh, the QBs, and tell me which one's better. So I'm going in order of the power rankings, not in core order QBs, so you don't think these are my rankings. Allen, Mahomes, Goff, Stroud, Purdy, Love, Hurts, uh, Rogers, Carr. I would take, oh. Uh, I... Let's see. Let's just call that one debatable. How about that? Yeah, Justin Fields. Yeah. I would take him over yes. Justin Fields. Uh, Gino, Lamar, no. Dak, no, no, uh, Baker. Uh no, 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 nope. no, no, no. Uh, Herbert, no. Stafford, no. Burrow, Kirk, N- Kirk. Yes, current Kirk, current Kirk. Current Kirk. Yes. Which matters, yes. Yes, Which yes matters. that matters. Because this is current Sam Darnold, too, who's playing very Kyler. well. Tyler. Uh, no. Jaden. Uh, y- yeah. I w- yeah. Yeah, I'd say at the moment right now. I need to see. Yeah, Vikings are running a more advanced offense, and Sam Darnold has had, I think, d- better deep ball accuracy, even though I think Jaden Daniels has the bigger arm, so yes. Um. Uh, Watson, yes. Tua, I don't even count. Tool two right dead, now. yes. Caleb, I'd take Caleb before him. Daniel Jones, mm. yes. Anthony Richardson, Trevor Lawrence, yes. No, yes. You no. Well, uh, if you it, that is so reactionary. If people are if, if people are actually going to take Sam, say they say Sam Donald, Trevor Lawrence, you are reactionary. Those you Lawrence are just numbers mad are bad, that man. Gen, you are mad that Trevor Lawrence got this generational tag and he hasn't lived up to that, and you're like, see, he's not that good. Well, that well, that's the this is this is why it's so, this is why the NFL is so weird right now, man. Because Here's, you no, have not weird. Trevor Lawrence is better than Sam Darnold. I get it. Like I, I, I think you're. If you think that you, if you really down in your heart think you would rather have Trevor Lawrence. Well, maybe it's week ten, and we're saying that. That that's the thing, though. It, it's that this sucks because you don't have a. There's no sample. Sam Darnold has right played now. better than Trevor Lawrence through three weeks. Tre- Sam Darnold, or yeah, or, sorry, Sam Darnold has played better than Trevor Lawrence through three weeks. Yeah, that's 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 a that's a fact. Another fact is Trevor Lawrence is better than Sam Darnold. Brissett, Nix, Minshew, Levis, Andy Dolan. So that would be at best. At best, he would be the nineteenth ranked quarterback in the NFL. All right, we'll we'll see. We'll see how it develops and how it goes and how it goes on. How, how it goes on. Um, but he's playing He's playing like a top 10 one right now. Sure he is. I love that Vikings offense. I love it. And I think they can get – I think they can have success in the playoffs too, right? I don't think it's just 
you know, oh, they're three and zero. Like I think they can find success in the playoffs, and like they might just be a fucking contender too. They might just be a contender too. Um, and that's the that's the tough thing about you know you look at these power rankings right now. It's that you know we have the Ravens are one and two, right, and they're thirteenth. The Seahawks are undefeated. We have them at twelfth. The Saint the Steelers are undefeated. We have them at eleventh. You know that, that's the that's the tough thing about the NFL right now is that these teams with good records aren't sub- necessarily supposed to have these great records. The 49ers the Steelers are fifth does, at one and two. Should be three and zero. Oh. You know what I mean? But the Vikings is a surprising yeah. one because they beat the 49ers and the Texans. Right. But the Vikings but like the 40, are also, we the 49ers have them, shouldn't we have be... them eighth. We have the Vikings eighth. I have them personally seventh. I have them above the Eagles. You know, even the Green Bay Packers without Jordan Love shouldn't be two and one. Shouldn't be with Malik Willis. Yeah. It's it's a weird it's a weird landscape Packers have right the best now. Rush it, offense in the NFL right now. It's a weird it's a very very weird landscape right now that we're that we're seeing where there's the, some good teams aren't good. And that's the first uh, three weeks of any season though. For sure. Right. Right. All right. That's uh, power rankings. Uh, we will see you guys on Friday for a, a full preview pod. How about that? We'll see you then. Until then, that is football today.